Welcome back for the third installment of a 1974 345 V8 engine rebuild. This took me quite a while to do as I'm not an engine builder at all. Uh, I learned as I went, but um, I will show you how I put the engine back together. And by no means is this an instructional video, so you get what you pay for. Well, I just got my engine and parts back from the machine shop, so I'm going to start peeling back the plastic and see what we got here. Pretty exciting, it's like Christmas morning. Let's see. It's amazing what a hot bath will do to an engine. The machine shop pushed in all the plugs and the, um, all the caps and plugs and the camshaft bearings. They checked the alignment and they didn't have to line bore the mains. Didn't have to deck it, top or bottom. Found it all nice and straight. They did uh, overbore 30 over and honed it. And obviously cleaned the whole block, which is really nice. And polished the crank and the camshaft. Oh, those look way better than they were before. They had a, like a ridge down the middle. These look really good. This is my first look at the crankshaft and the camshaft after they've been polished. I'm not sure quite what I was expecting, but they look nice and shiny and they didn't find anything wrong with them, so they're good to put back in the engine. I think I'll plastic gauge the main bearings just to check clearances and go from there. So it's back up on the stand and ready for the camshaft to go in first and then I'll put the crank in. Okay, before we get too far, I highly recommend getting a set of these service manuals for these trucks. You can pick them up from Binder Books, search it online. They're not cheap, but well worth it in my opinion. Okay, the first thing I did here is lube up the camshaft bearings with um, assembly lube and then I gently inserted the camshaft, being very careful not to scratch either the camshaft or the bearings. Next, I installed the main bearings into the block. I put just a tiny little bit of assembly lube on each of these bearings for the crankshaft to rest on. Next is the crank, set gently in place. Gentle. Don't want to scratch anything here. <coughs> Whoops. I'm sure that's fine. No assembly lube on the top of these as I was going to plastic gauge and you need to do that dry. Okay, so we're going to measure these plastic gauge strips. Let's see where we're at. So that's piece right there it looks like three thousandths approximately this one looks like even less no that's three as well three thousandths there hard to see and this one here is about that's four thousandths between three and four I think we're good there so I measured one two three bearing journals I'm not going to do the center one it's a little hard to get out and redo so I've still got to pull these to um, clean and lube them for the final time and then put them back together but the rest I did, we're all in spec. I'm pretty confident that the machine shop did a good job here. So this is just kind of the final check to make sure. Almost sounds like I know what I'm talking about. Not even close. At this point, I'm just cleaning off the plastic gauge residue and getting it ready for the final install. You can see I'm struggling with that center bearing cap. It was a real bear to try to get out. The same with the far end cap. I lube up all the bearings and I made sure I lubed the lobes on the camshaft 
with the break-in oil for flat tap and cams. Set the crank back in place and now I can rotate it a little bit now that there's oil on it and make sure the timing marks line up. Here I put all the bearing caps back in place and hand tighten the bolts. Then I gently tap the bearing caps back in place using the end of a screwdriver in this case and then final torqued all the bolts in the proper sequence. The crank is in and torqued down. I still have to do the, uh, ga the gasket and this, these uh, rubber seal parts in here. I'm not sure if I have to lift that again to do those, but it's all torqued down and uh, lined up the timing marks. So that should be good right there. And everything spins nice. It's a good sign. It's a little sticky because it's all full of um, assembly lube, but should be good. It is finally time to put the piston rings in. So I guess I'm gonna grab a piston and connecting rod and put the rings in the bore and measure by pushing the piston down like they say you're supposed to do and uh, see what happens. Okay, I'll use that piston from that cylinder. Compression rings are supposed to be 0 0.01 to 0 0.02. Yeah, okay, there's 0 0.01 all the way up to 0 0.02. So measure this gap. That's 0 0.01. Looks too tight. Point zero one goes. Let's see point point zero one five. No. One one goes. These are right on the edge. Somewhere between 0 0.011 and 0 0.015. That's within spec. And that's good enough for me. I'm not building the race engine. So this was one of the more frustrating parts of this engine build. And it took me a while to figure out how to get this done. These ring compressors are just not very good. After a while I figured out a technique that worked but at some point on this first one, I just wanted to take a sledgehammer and plow it into the block. The idea here is that you take the compressor and you squeeze the rings into the piston. And then that should all line up with the cylinder bore, making it easy to insert the piston with the rings into the bore. The problem is, is that that ring compressor skirt sometimes slides into the bore with the piston or the rings slide out from underneath the compressor before they get into the piston. It's a delicate balance. But eventually I got it to work. And for those of you that are paying close attention, you'll notice that I'm only showing four cylinders here. Clearly it's a V8 and I do the other four, just not on camera. Okay, torque time. 50 foot pounds. And all these uh, rod bearings. And 
I guess these don't have to be torqued in a sequence. I think. I went through and torqued all the bolts on the connecting rods and then I marked each one with a paint pen so I knew which ones were torqued. It makes it just a little easier to keep organized that way I find. It felt like I'd achieved a small milestone at this point because now I know all the pistons and rings fit and the camshaft and crankshaft roll smoothly and there was a small glimmer of hope that this might actually work. Quick shop tidy time. And now it's time to move on to the top end. I had started cleaning the heads, disassembling them and doing that myself, but after trying to lap the valves and not getting a good seal, I sent these to the machine shop as well. They did a complete valve job and matched all the spring tensions and tested for leaks. Head gaskets installed, heads bolted on and torqued, ready for push rods and lifters. A little bit of the special lube on the top of these lifters, according to the service manual. Hey, I'm just following the directions here. This stuff apparently helps with the break-in of the lifters and the camshaft and allows them to mate together. These lifter bore holes are lubed with just ordinary engine oil. These are all brand new lifters, so they need the break-in, but the camshaft was the original because it was still fine. So I think ordinarily you would install a new camshaft and lifters together. But hey, I was going to try this. Push rods are all cleaned and inserted onto the top of the lifters with a little bit of assembly lube on each one. I don't have any video of the rockers being installed, but here is some of them being reassembled after cleaning. And then I installed them on top of the heads and torqued them all down, of course marking each bolt after they're done. And that pretty much completes the main engine assembly. And now it's time to paint. I did a lot of masking on this engine to make sure that I didn't cover things I didn't want to cover. I wanted to make sure those gold um, insert plugs weren't painted over. But I basically painted this with some sort of higher heat engine paint. It's red. Let's call it international red. Okay? Okay. One of my favorite things, of course, is removing the tape after I'm done painting. And this was pretty satisfying. The rear main seal is now installed and ready for the torque converter and transmission to be bolted on. I still can't get over how good this engine looks compared to what I started with. 
there's something very therapeutic about the disassembly, cleaning, and reassembly process. New gaskets and a clean and repainted engine is very satisfying, and I'm really looking forward to a leak-free motor. At least that's the hope. I installed the proper break-in oil and mounted it on the test stand. Now there is nothing left to do but try and start it. Here we go. Then you get fly off. Now apparently you're supposed to start it and immediately get it to 2000 RPM for the camshaft and lifter break-in procedure. You need to run it this way for at least 20 minutes. Fail number one. The engine doesn't start right away and I'm worried that excessive cranking of the engine is wiping the oil off the cam lobes and causing premature wear. It's alive. It actually took way more tries to start it than I'm willing to show here. Kind of embarrassing actually. And I just hope I didn't do too much damage to it. Okay. Fail number two, the engine starts but won't stay running and it looks like we might have a timing issue. Okay, so we got a timing. Timing's up maybe just a little advanced. Is that too advanced? advanced? Now we're just guessing, and trying not to get blown up. Yeah. Back it off a bit more. Okay. Finally got it to stay running and up to 2000 RPM. We had to learn sign language because that thing is ferociously loud with no mufflers installed yet. What does two fingers mean? 2,000 RPM? Just down a tickle? Perfect. Four fingers? Closed fist? Not sure. It's running and not trying to light me on fire, so I guess I'm pretty happy about that. How many fingers am I holding up? Two? Yeah, me too. I guess that means we're still at 2,000 RPM and holding. Um, sure, just right. Only 10 minutes running so far. Hey, come here for a sec. Fail number three. The water temp gauge was climbing off the charts. Shut her down. It ended up being a faulty temp sender. Once it was replaced, I ran the engine again to complete the break-in. All that's left is to put the engine back where it came from.